Hi everyone, let's learn how to factor a quadratic by splitting the middle term. We have a quadratic here that's 2x squared plus 7x plus 6. And by the end of this tutorial, we'll know how to show that this equals to 2x plus 3 times x plus 2. But I'm going to erase this final result and work through a four-step method that we can follow to reach it. So let's get started. The first step is to multiply any number multiplying the x squared, so in this case that's 2, by the constant term. So that's the term without an x, and in this case that's 6. So we have 2 times 6, which equals to 12. And that's step 1 done. The second step, we need to find two numbers, which I'll call p and q. And those two numbers must be such that their product, so p times q, equals to 12. And that 12 is the number we just found in step 1. But on top of this, the sum of those two numbers, so p plus q, has to equal to 7. And that 7 is the number that's multiplying the x in our quadratic. To find these two numbers, p and q, I focus on the product, so the 12 that we have here. And I look for all of the pairs of whole numbers that I can find, which multiplied together give us 12. The first that comes to mind would be 1 and 12, since indeed 1 times 12 is 12 and 12 times 1 is 12. The second that comes to mind would be 2 and 6, since 2 times 6 is 12 and 6 times 2 is 12. And the third one that comes to mind would be 3 and 4, since 3 times 4 is 4 times 3 is 12. Now, looking at these three pairs, it's clear that they all respect the condition that they have to multiply to equal to 12. But we now need to find which of these pairs adds up to give us 7. And it doesn't take us too long to see that if we add 3 and 4 together, we definitely get 7. So we found our numbers p and q. And we can go ahead and state that p equals to 3 and q equals to 4. And I should say that if you decide to make p equal to 4 and q equal to 3, it makes no difference whatsoever. We move on to step 3. And in this step, we actually split the middle term. Here's what that means. Our quadratic was 2x squared plus 7x plus 6. And the middle term is 7x. And the idea behind splitting the middle term is to use the two numbers we just found in step 2 to rewrite this quadratic as 2x squared plus 4x plus 3x plus 6. In other words, we've split this 7x into 4x plus 3x. And to be clear, I know that I have to split 7x into 4x and 3x thanks to the two numbers that we found in step 2, which were 4 and 3. And I should say that the order in which we split this doesn't matter at all. Indeed, I could have written this as 3x plus 4x here. In the end, we would still get the same result. Finally, we move on to step 4, in which we actually factor it. So I'll quickly copy this last result we had here. That was 2x squared plus 4x plus 3x plus 6. To factor this, we start by focusing on these first two terms. So that's 2x squared plus 4x. And we fully factor those two terms. Looking at 2x squared and 4x, their highest common factor is 2x. So in factored form, those first two terms would be 2x in parentheses x plus 2. Indeed, you can go ahead and check, but 2x times x would be 2x squared plus 2x times 2, which would be 4x. We now take care of the next two terms, this 3x plus 6. And here's how I do that. I start by copying this pair of parentheses here, this x plus 2. And I write plus. I then leave a little blank space here because I'm going to write a number there later. And I then copy this pair of parentheses, so that was x plus 2. And at this stage, I write this x plus 2 without thinking at all. All I'm making sure of is that it's the same pair of parentheses as the one that I have here. The next thing to do is to focus on the x term inside this pair of parentheses and ask ourselves what we would have to multiply it by for it to equal to the x term in the line above it, so in this case to 3x. And it doesn't take too long to see that to get 3x, 
we would have to multiply this x by 3. And that 3 is the number which goes in that little blank space we had left, and it multiplies this pair of parentheses. Now that that's done, all we have to do is write every single thing we see which isn't inside parentheses, so 2x and plus 3, inside its own pair of parentheses. Here's what I mean. We write 2x and plus 3 inside its own pair of parentheses, so that would be in parentheses 2x plus 3. And that then multiplies the x plus 2 parentheses that we had in the line above it. So that multiplies x plus 2. And we're done. We've just factored this quadratic. And in fact, we can go ahead and state our final answer, which is that 2x squared plus 7x plus 6 in factored form is equal to 2x plus 3 times x plus 2. And that's our final answer. And we now know how to write a quadratic in its factored form by splitting the middle term. And if that's all that you were after, you can stop watching this tutorial now. But if you bear with me for just a minute or two more, I'll be showing you how we can use this method of factoring quadratics for solving quadratic equations. So here we go. Let's say we were asked to solve the equation 2x squared plus 7x plus 6 equals to 0. This is a typical quadratic equation, and we may be tempted to solve it using the quadratic formula. But we could also solve this equation by factoring it. Here's how that works. Notice, first of all, that the left-hand side of this equation is the same quadratic as the one we just worked with. Keeping that in mind, we can replace the left-hand side of this equation by its factored form that we obtained here. In other words, we can rewrite this equation as, in parentheses, 2x plus 3 times x plus 2 equals to 0. This equation is now made up of two pairs of parentheses that are being multiplied together and whose product is equal to 0. But the only way that this product can equal to 0 is if either the expression inside the first pair of parentheses equals to 0, or the expression inside the second pair of parentheses equals to 0. In other words, this equation will equal to 0 if either 2x plus 3 equals to 0, which leads to the equation 2x plus 3 equals to 0, or if x plus 2 equals to 0, which leads to the equation x plus 2 equals to 0. And solving these two equations will lead to the solutions to this quadratic equation. So let's go ahead. This first equation leads to 2x equals to negative 3, and dividing both sides by 2 leads to x equals to negative 3 over 2, and that's one of the two solutions of our quadratic equation, and the other equation quickly leads to the second solution, which is x equals to negative 2. And there we have it. Those are the two solutions to this quadratic equation. What this quick example shows us is that if we're able to write a quadratic in its factored form, then we can use its factored form to solve the corresponding quadratic equation. Do keep that fact in mind, as it often comes up in exam questions. All right, that's it for this first example. In our next tutorial, we'll be working through a second example in which we factor a quadratic by splitting the middle term again, but this time we'll see in step two that one of the two numbers, p or q, will be negative, and that makes things a tiny bit trickier, so do make sure to watch it. For now, though, that's it for this tutorial.